welcome to yet another episode of AAU Talks on AAU Television, the voice of higher education in Africa. Today, I am in the Kenyan capital, Nairobi, to discuss a very important topic, which is on water resource management. This topic falls under the Sustainable Development Goal 6, which is on water, clean water, and sanitation. And to do justice to this topic is a professor from Jarumoji Odinga, Odinga University of Science and Technology. You are following this discussion on all our social media platforms and on our dedicated website, tv.aau.org. I am the sitting host for this episode of AAU Talks. My name is Ransford Beckwin. Before we start the program, let's go for a short break. <music> Water, they say, is life. However, in the world, if there is no water, there is no life. And even in outer space, there are explorations looking for water as a source of life on other planets. So today's topic is going to be very, very engaging and it's also going to be very educative. And to help me discuss the topic for today is Professor Maurice Nyadawa, who is a civil engineer and lectures at Jarumoji Odinga Odinga University of Science and Technology here in Kenya, and he has specialized in water resource management. Prof, welcome to AAU TV. Thank you, Wana Ransfo. To kickstart the discussion, I want to ask a very simple question. Yes. What is water? Yes. Water is a natural resource, yeah, which is supporting life, as mm. all people know it. Yeah, that uh, water is a necessity for life and everybody needs it. So it is one of the natural resources where everybody needs it. It is required even in ourselves, in our body health-wise. So simply everybody doesn't uh, need any science or going to school. Everybody will tell you something that they know what. Mm. Yes. There is a saying out there that the next world war yes. may necessarily be on water. Yes. Does this hold true? Uh, yes, the, uh, it may, the world, to, to the world scale, I may not take it there, but there's already wars. Water wars are already there. There are a lot of conflicts about water in small, even in Kenya itself. We fight every day in s s uh, over water over by small communities where water is scarce. And even within a country's country, we have what is called transboundary waters. These are waters which traverse more than one country. So you have seen a lot of conflicts on water. Yeah. Uh, and this not started today. There are water treaties, which are even here in Africa, like in the Nile Basin. Mm -hmm. Why was there a treaty if people <laughs> could not fight? So there's a lot of conflicts around water. But whether it can escalate to a global war, that one maybe I'm not competent to to put okay. it at that scale. Mm, yes. Nile Basin is occupied by 10 countries. Okay. Yes. Including <laughs> up to Egypt. Uh, up to so Egypt. actually in Africa, it is the largest basin with uh, uh, so much of the transboundary issues. Okay. Yeah, we have a number of them. We have the, the, the Niger. Yeah, we have the Southern uh, the Volta. The, uh, we have uh, 
uh, a number of the transboundary waters. Okay. But uh, what we are saying is that most of the downstream countries use water which don't come within their boundaries. That's what causes problems. Okay. Like now you will find the countries which are not within the Lake Victoria region using a lot of water. As the Nile traverses going, it's tra traversing an arid uh, countries. Okay. So you find their use or their demand might, might be high. They might be interested on how the upstream countries are using. Okay. And those are the things which cause conflicts. Mm. Yeah. The more reason why they say that the water yeah. will be the source of um, conflict, yes. a global world conflict, because yeah. now the cost of a bottle of water is almost <laughs> like the cost of you know, a bottle of beer. Yes. 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 But now let's move the discussion yes. forward. Yes. Why was there the need for water to appear consistently in the Sustainable Development Goals. Yes. Because it falls under two or three yeah. development goals. How, why is that important? Yeah, the history of water. Water, actually, the importance of thinking about water is not a modern thing. You see civilization attached to water. Mm. Yeah. Whenever you saw civilization taking place in man, they were near water sources. And Africa is like this history puts it, that we have the Nile where you, uh, the human civilization started from. Now, uh, the question of the world trying to give priority to water issues is also something very long. Actually, even if you, don't, if you start tracing, you will see that in the 90s, we had the water and sanitation decade. Mm -hmm. Then after that we came to the MDGs. Yes. If you read through the MDGs, you will find that in goal 7 of the MDGs which ended up in 2015, yeah. which was talking of environment, water is encapsulated inside there. Mm. We are going on a short break and when we come back, yeah. we are going to delve deeper into the African water vision. Stay tuned. <laughs> to evaluate the African water vision, mm. but now specifically on industry. Yes. Industries are to be eco-efficient yes. in, in production, hence the continuous yeah. research yeah. into their yeah. uh, methods of production. Yeah. Should you or do you think that industry should pay for yes. water misuse? Not only water. The industry, and if I give you an example of Kenya, the legislation of Kenya, is that uh, there's what we call polluter pays, pays principle. Yes, PPP. Yeah, and this one usually targets industries. Mm. Yeah, it's a legislation which not explicitly saying, but if you see its uh, direction, it is an industry. Okay. Industry is driven by profit, basically. And any industry manufactured a good which is a byproduct. Byproducts of industries, very few are usable 100%. Mm. Yeah. Most byproducts, even if it is water like this, you will find out that the temperature is very high mm -hmm. or something, which it doesn't make it of immediate use. Okay. For that purpose, it, and uh, it, because industries are working on profit, yeah. they don't like spending too much resources mm -hmm. on dealing with the byproducts. For that purpose, they want to dump it somewhere and leave it. Okay. And water resource has been the victim. Because as of now, as of now in the world, Waste disposal, yeah. We don't have another technology which is efficient apart from dumping it in a water source mm. all over the world. Yeah. yeah. So we only assume that a water source has got what is called 
a high okay. dilution pump. Yeah. yeah. For that purpose, it will still assimilate, degrade the the the, the byproduct mm. to a pro to a to a level which either it is inert or it is still able to be treated efficiently. Mm. Yeah. But this is not the case because now industries end up with things which are not biodegradable. Yeah, they could be minerals things. Okay. Yeah, uh, so those ones now are, are, are an environmental and a health hazard yeah. to human beings. But are there strict principles on water reuse by industry? And let's take Kenya as a case study. Yeah, Kenya as a case study, we, we wouldn't say we are on top of things as okay. in, uh, in water reuse. But uh, the, in the legislation wise, in terms of force enforcing, actually just a few weeks before you arrived around, I think uh, our, our, our organization, which is uh, mandated to uh, prosecute the so-called polluters, shut down a number of factories in Nairobi. Okay. Yes. Because of a river which is just passing uh, in the town here, not very far from where we are seated now. If you go to that river, uh, you wouldn't know that it is a river. You might think it is some sewage, an open sewage. Really? But it is a natural river. And it's and this river now, by industry, I yeah, guess. Yeah, this river now is going down and joining one of the large catchments, one of the big rivers of Kenya, called Athi River. Yeah. And recently, the people down there are now downstream of Nairobi. Mm. And now their livestock, their lives have, um, something has just turned around mm. in their lives because of that. So now the government became very harsh and started closing some of the factories. Mm. Otherwise, in terms of reuse, uh, uh, we are not very good. Maybe we can think of a place like Namibia. Okay. Yeah. I think in Africa, maybe Namibia is on top of things because of less surface water available. Mm. Yeah, Namibia has got the vast of it is a desert. Okay. For that purpose, they are very good, uh, good uh, reuse uh, okay. systems. And reuse means that you can even turn sewage mm -hmm. into, into into drinkable water, potable yes. water. Yeah, that's what I think Bill Gates has been promoting. Yes, but we Afri we people who are coming from places where water is a little bit there we have just a uh, negative attitude. <laughs> 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 yeah. All the water which abstracted it from sources of Africa is going in agriculture. Mm. And this agriculture we are talking about, that agriculture potential of Africa is still 30%. The lands which are, uh, which are uh, supposed to be cultivated under irrigation, only 30. The, the other 30% of the arable land is using 80% <laughs> of the water which is uh, being withdrawn. 30% of the arable land is what is under... Uh, yes. it is, uh, and that uses 80% of yes. the, yeah. the water that yeah. we use. And again, that 80% of the water we take to agriculture, we lose 70% in poor conveyance systems. And Africa is leading this. Everything. Here is enough a government who tries to set some place for irrigation. Mm -hmm. And ours is just digging some canals and trying to say, putting a, a dam, dam and then say, ah, now you people are okay. Leaving now it? the conveyance and the efficiency to people who actually there are no maintenance, those canals, they are, it, is, it is bad. So and where lies cares. the efficiency of the policies that we develop? Uh, yeah, I think the problem as of now, uh, of, uh, Africa is, 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 uh, is, is treating in very interesting <laughs> boundaries. Mm. One thing, our water available is not that much. Yeah, the African rainfall uh, average is around uh, six, seven millimeters. Yeah, mm. but we have the extremes. We have places like near your place, the, the Guinea area, yeah, where uh, the annual rainfall is around uh, 1,400, okay. leading by the so-called African islands, the Madagascar down this side and Mauritius, mm -hmm. having rainfall of around 1,700 millimeters. Right. But now when you talk of the Sahel, the, the, near, the, the, near the Sahara here, yeah. we are having 70 millimeters. That, that is annually. small. Yes. 
in South Africa region here, we are talking about it and read there and there and there. So currently, the so-called uh, the the countries which are water scarce, there's what we call water scarce and water stress. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The water scarce countries are countries which have got available water at around less than a thousand okay. meter Maybe cube per meter. person per day. Less Means than if you use and if you are in those countries and you tend to use more than a thousand, yeah, it's a cube per person per day. Uh, and you, okay, the recommended is that it should be more than two thousand. It should be more than two thousand. Yes. So if you use less than a thousand, yeah, and there are many countries. Yeah, we are taking about fourteen countries somehow in close Africa. to there in Africa, which are falling within, and Kenya is one of them. Kenya Kenya's the available of water is uh, around uh, seven hundred. <laughs> Viewers, I've been talking to yes. Professor Maurice Nyadawa, who is um, um, a professor of civil engineering at Damoruji Odinga Odinga University of Science and Technology here in Kenya. The focus had been on water. Next time, we're going to talk about sanitation. Thank you very much for tuning in to AAU TV, the voice of higher education in Africa. Continue listening to other programs on the station. Take care and bye.